Hello my friends, Amy R here with Prairie Paper and Ink with another set of cards using the stamp set that comes in the May 2022 card kit from Simon Says Stamp. The set's available separately as well, so I will have links as always to all the things. But when I did the unboxing video and made a couple cards using this set, if you missed it, I'll have a link to that as well at the end of this video. Um, I did kind of a faux watercolor technique that I used to do quite often years and years ago, which <laughs> I had black splatter on this stamp. That's what I was scraping off with my fingernail. Because <laughs> when I did those other cards, I did some black splatter. Anyway, anyway, I, after I did that video, I still had, you know, ideas rolling around and I wanted to do a slightly more toned down, in a sense, I guess, more controlled version of the same thing. But rather than doing an entire panel, I would just do basically a floral. So I have Canson XL watercolor paper in my Misty. And I chose this stem image from the set. And I masked off. There's a little like dot image, kind of like a little floral attached to it. So I masked that off with just some Spellbinders tape. And I was inking up the rest of the stem with Simon's Sage and Pine positively saturated inks and I did that because I wanted to get just a couple tones of green because why not and I'm also using my misty because I'm stamping things more than once I wanted to make sure that I got these images stamped really well because I am stamping on watercolor paper so there's a bit of texture there and like I said this time I wanted it a little more intentional a little more crisp and not as crazy fly by the seat of my pants as I, as I usually do. <laughs> so I added the florals and these I was inking up. I used carnation and peony inks and positively saturated inks are extremely water reactive. So I'm doing one panel at a time this time. I mentioned this in the previous video that it was a little bit of a mistake to do two because it's just like the, they just start to move. Like the colors just start to move. So I sprayed it with water and you can see the color immediately starts to wick out, which is fabulous. I also have on hand just a random little, like little baby wipe. I always have the Kirkland brand from Costco because they're plant based. But I use that as well to kind of soak up some of the excess. I'm not, you know, I don't want things to be perfect, but these inks do move with the water. So I'm just kind of soaking up a little bit of the excess and then I'm drying the panel with my heat tool because if you just spray it and like walk away the color will just continue to move you know so using the heat tool just kind of sets everything in place so I've got this slightly more controlled yet you know kind of messy watercolor I just decided to call this faux watercolor I don't know what you call I don't know if there's it I don't I'm not good at naming things ever ever I'm the worst coming up with names for things. You should see my save files on my little Stardew Valley game. <laughs> Chris always laughs at me because he's like, what is like, basically like farm one, farm two. Anyway, anyway, back to the cards. <laughs> I dried this completely with my heat tool until it was just dry. You don't have to dry it completely, but since I was going to add more splatter, of course, um, I was like, might as well just dry the whole thing. So I set that aside. And I'm going to repeat the process, but this time I'm going to change it just slightly. One, I'm going to use a different color, but I'm also going to alter it a little bit, which is one of the fun things about stamping. So I masked off that little kind of floral image again. I'm inking up the stem with the same colors, so sage and pine. And doing the same thing, it's kind of, I inked it up with sage first and I'd stamped it. And then I inked it up with sage, added a bit of the pine, which is the darker green, and then stamped that right on top. And then rather than ink up that little, little tiny floral, I took a separate stamp and inked that up. Another beauty of stamping is you can just kind of make your own things, you know, do whatever you want. So with these florals, I'm inking these up with peachy and grapefruit and then doing the same process. I also got a little oopsie. I don't know. I managed to get a smear of one like the grapefruit ink, but thanks to these colors being so, you know, water reactive, I just sprayed it with water, rubbed it with my finger a bit and pretty much removed it from the watercolor paper. So that was a win. Anyway, did the same process. This time the green really wanted to move and it was like starting to obscure the, the florals. So I just kind of kept dabbing at it. 
with my little baby wipe. No biggie. And then same thing, you know, sprayed with water, dried it with my heat tool to keep things from continuing to wick out. So you can experiment with, and I said this in the other video too, you can experiment with like different types of inks, like distress inks will work with, with this, um, pretty much any water reactive ink. You just got to find the combo of ink and watercolor paper that will work because different papers work differently. Different inks work differently. So just, you know, grab a scrap, stamp it with a water reactive ink, spray it with water, see what happens. You never know. It's fun sometimes. This is how you discover like new things. So anyway, everything's dry. I'm now going to add black splatter with black soot distress paint. I don't know why. I love how that looks. You never would think like, yeah, you know, black splatter over florals, like what a combo. But, and yet it works. I don't know why. I can't explain it, but it just it completes these little images. So I set those aside to let that paint dry. And off camera, I die cut um, the Simply Thank You Wafer Dye, which I've used in practically every video lately. <laughs> I love this wafer dye. It's so perfect. And it just, I don't know, you know, you just kind of like fixate on things. At least I do. You know, I fixate on certain things and I'll just use it, use it, use it, use it lose it for a while, you know, it grows legs, walks off, and then I'll discover it down the road and then use it, use it, use it. Anyway, anyway, I die cut it with black cardstock and I stacked layers together with craft tacky glue. I was just working on the stamp packaging because stacking things with black cardstock on a black work surface is getting to be too much for me. Like I'm getting old. So, you know, having just a lighter surface and the stamp packaging was sitting there, you know, it, it comes in handy. So after everything's dry, my sentiments are stacked. I put these little panels back into my Misty and I lined up one of the little sentiments from that same um, brushed flowers stamp set. And normally I would like stamp in black or I did consider heat embossing this with gold. That would have looked really pretty. But for whatever reason, I was just like, no, don't want to, don't want to heat emboss. Just, I didn't want to. So instead, I inked up the sentiments with the darkest of the color ink. So I used grapefruit and peony inks to stamp that little for everything on both of these panels. So I had that stamped and then I pulled out my card bases, which are going to be top folding A2 cards. So four and a quarter by five and a half. And I'm just going to stamp more sentiments from the set. And so I stamped the You're the Best with Versafine Claire Nocturne ink. And then there's a little XOXO stamp, which I just put on an angle. And that I stamped with the Sage ink on the inside of both of these. And then I took the two little heart stamps in the set that I just, I don't know, I just love. There's something, but again, about little heart images. Like I said in my last video, how stars just work with anything. Hearts too. Stars and hearts, you know, basic little shapes like that just work. So I would kept going back and forth here. I would ink up the one heart for the one card with the lighter of the ink, so carnation, and then this one was peachy. And then I took the other heart and inked up with the darker ink. So I used grapefruit and then peony on the other one. So everything's going to kind of tie together. I'll have a card with pinks and a card with the, like peachy orange colors. And then off camera also, I die cut more black cardstock. I used the largest of the new A2 marquee wafer dies. So I had die cut the black cardstock with that and I would like cut down these watercolor panels before I even started to be smaller than those so that these will frame the um, little watercolor panels with this cool marquee black outline. So I adhered those together with craft tacky glue and stuck acrylic blocks on top just to hold everything down because watercolor paper is pretty hefty, especially this Canson XL watercolor paper because it's 140 pound weight, I think. So added that adhesive, stuck it to the uh, A2 marquee die cut, and then piled on the acrylic blocks to hold everything down so that everything just fuses together nicely. And then when it comes to adhering the sentiments, and I should have done this when I was stamping the for everything sentiment as well, but I keep forgetting this was, it's underneath the stash, like the disaster that is my desk. Um, Simon came out with their own little T-square ruler and it's adorable. <laughs> it's so cute, but it's also so perfect. It's so perfect. Like, I love the size of it. The size is perfect for card makers. I, I'm, I'm not being paid to say any of this. Um, I love it. 
it's just it's sturdy and it's not too big my other t-square ruler is so big because you know it's a standard ruler so i have nowhere to put it and it's just in a container out of reach I, anyway anyway this little guy can now sit in one of my little containers right on my desk and he's perfect and he's cute and i need to use him more because again i'm getting old man and you know i've got astigmatism in my eyes and i'm having a hard time eyeballing things as good as you know i used to be able to mm. which at the same time though i say this things don't need to be perfect perfection's overrated you know we can use the tools and everything to to line things up and get things straight and whatever but if it's not whatever honestly it ain't the end of the world if someone's going to complain to me being like oh my god your sentiment was so crooked on the card you sent me I, really you know anyway <laughs> anyway <laughs> so many side rants in today's video apologies <laughs> i adhered my sentiments and this is also why i love that thank you sentiment it has an outline but i didn't use it and you can like butt them up together like this in a previous video i put them all on one line like it's just it's the perfect thank you sentiment i really like it so i adhered them I adhered the panels to the card bases as always like a broken record you could leave it here but I am gonna add some bling and I came across these these are they're called bubble blower embellishments from Trinity stamps they're so pretty so pretty I have other ones similar but these are they look more dimensional than they really are they're actually sort of like flatter if that makes sense like they have a flat base but the, because of the iridescence to them they look very dimensional but they're not and they're gorgeous i was only gonna add a couple but as soon as i started sticking them on these cards i was like oh yeah and then i was like "Ooh, they'll make pretty little like flower centers as well love so i added more because why not so i adhered those into place with craft tacky glue using my little embellishment wand and then the glue will dry nice and clear so then i'm just gonna have these gorgeous like kind of floating shimmery embellishments on these cards and it's just chef's kiss you know so that finished off the cards like i said earlier um i will have a link below the video to my blog post i'll have a supply list i'll link to all the supplies i used at the end of this video i'll link to the previous one i did with this stamp set creating the um like larger panels and whatnot so you can check that out as well if you missed it thank you guys so much for watching for subscribing for thumbs upping for commenting all of it i very much appreciate your support and stay tuned for another video i will be back very soon bye <laughs>